Commodore Matthew C. Perry, the man who unlocked Japan. By the mid-19th century, Japan was nearing the end of its Edo period, also known as the Time of Great Peace. The ruling regime, the Tokugawa Shogunate, was at the head of a feudal system which had stabilized Japan for over 200 years. In 1635, the passage of the seclusion laws had virtually removed Japan from all foreign influences. However, the arrival of the Commodore Matthew C. Perry in 1853 prompted the reversal of this isolationist policy. In the following time period, Japan experienced a technological revolution and boomed onto the world stage. Born on April 10, 1794 to a naval captain, it was only natural for Perry to pursue a career in the Navy himself. At the age of 17, he received a naval commission and rose through the ranks while serving on many vessels during the 1812 and Mexican-American Wars. During this time, Perry became one of the leading proponents of modernizing the United States Navy to include steam-powered ships. In 1837, he oversaw and took command of the Navy's second steamship, the USS Fulton. Eventually, Perry was dubbed the father of the steam navy. In the 1630s, almost 200 years before Perry's birth, Japan had enacted a foreign relations policy known as Sokoku, which literally translates as locked country. Under these laws, no European foreigner could enter Japan without being subjected to the death penalty. This radical policy was intended to shelter Japan and the power of its leader, the Shogun, from the religious and cultural influences of colonial powers such as Spain and Portugal. As time progressed, Sokoku also prevented the imperialist British Empire from forcing their way into Japan. The bloody scenes of the first opium war between China and Britain over trade disputes in the 1840s were never repeated in Japan thanks to the policy of Sokoku. However, this policy also caused Japan to be oblivious to the major scientific advances of the Industrial Revolution. Thus, even though Japan was largely conflict-free during this era, it was quickly becoming technologically inferior to the rest of the world. In 1852, Perry, now a Commodore, set his sights on securing a trade agreement with Japan, which was deemed by the West to be a closed country. Prior to selling to Japan, Perry studied books and even consulted with the Philip Franz von Siebold, who had lived near and studied Japan for over eight years. Now armed with maps which Siebold had provided, Perry sailed for Japan with a group of four ships, two of which were steam-powered and 560 men. Perry's goal was to be a peacemaker and to bring Japan into what he called the family of civilized nations. Ironically, the Commodore's embracement of steam technology posed a challenge when he arrived in the Japanese town of Shimoda on July 8, 1853. The Japanese villagers, never having seen a steamship before, thought that the giant dragons puffing smoke were approaching and promptly raised an army of over 17,000 in order to defend themselves from the approaching threat. The reaction of the Japanese people can be reflected by one famous poem written after Perry's arrival. The steam-powered ships break the halcyon slumber of the Pacific. A mere four boats are enough to make us lose sleep at night. However, Perry never wished to disturb the Japanese people. His intention was to deliver a letter from President Fillmore to the Emperor asking for Japan's friendship and trade. On July 12th, the Japanese official Kayama insisted that Commodore Perry go to the port of Nagasaki in an attempt to put more distance between the powerful Americans and Japanese capital city of Edo, later to be known as Tokyo. Perry refused to leave and refused to deliver his letter to anyone but the Emperor himself. Unbeknownst to the Commodore, the Emperor of Japan during the Edo period was actually a powerless figurehead. The official who made all the important political decisions was known as the Shogun. Upon hearing of Commodore Perry's arrival, the Shogun at the time, named Ayoshi, fell ill and left his advisors to run the country. In order to make himself seem mysterious and powerful, Perry had his crew address him by the title of Admiral and withdrew into his ship's cabin. 
This ploy proved quite effective. His cabin came to be known by the Japanese as the abode of his high and mighty mysteriousness. After his fleet began to run out of provisions, Perry agreed to hand the letter over to the princesses of Izu and Iwami on the 14th of July. Three days later, Perry left for Hong Kong, with intentions of returning the next spring to hear the response of the Japanese. When he heard rumors that Russia was attempting to contact the Japanese, Perry decided to return prematurely on February 13, 1854 with nine ships and over 1,600 men. The Japanese, having been impressed with the American's technology, industry, and scientific accomplishments, agreed to help Perry to negotiate a treaty in Kanagawa. Negotiations were long and arduous, as all discussions had to be translated into Dutch before they could be translated into each party's native language. When the Japanese were reluctant to meet all the terms of Perry's proposal, he invited them to a ship for a feast, and gave the Japanese people gifts including guns, perfumes, a miniature train, a telegraph, and a steam engine. On March 31, 1854, thanks to much persistence from Commodore Perry, the Treaty of Kanagawa was signed, securing peace and friendship between the United States and Japan. Additionally, the ports of Shimoda and Hakodate were opened up to trade and Japan agreed to supply and assist U.S. ships which were in the area. The treaty caused much discontent in Japan, but proponents of isolation strongly opposed its enforcement. In 1866, an alliance between the Satsuma and Choshu domains challenged the power of the shogunate. The resulting internal strife was only quelled in 1868 with the following declaration by the Meiji Emperor. We shall henceforth exercise supreme authority in all the internal and external affairs of the country. Consequently, the title of emperor must be substituted for that of shogun, in which the treaties have been made. With the fall of the shogun during the so-called Meiji Restoration, the feudal system which had been the social structure of Japan for hundreds of years was effectively abolished. Japan was free to truly enter the age of technological revolution. Within five years, it had already acquired 26 of the Commodore's favorite vehicles, steamships. The Meiji Restoration and its consequences are generally held to be a direct response to the arrival of Perry and the removal of the Sokoku policy. Commodore Perry's legacy to the Japanese people can still be seen today. Japanese celebrate the anniversary of his arrival every July with the annual Black Ship Festivals. Additionally, a small museum has been constructed in Japan in order to commemorate the effects of Perry. Perhaps the greatest tribute to Perry's efforts can be seen in the city of Tokyo, formerly Edo, which has become a huge metropolis and one of the leading centers of technological innovation in the world. Its towering skyscrapers and bustling streets are a direct result of Commodore Matthew C. Perry, the man who opened up the portal to Japan.